You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening. Happy 4th of July. Thank you for tuning in. We have got a dynamite, explosive show for you tonight on this 4th of July weekend. And my first guest, well, great things happened to him last time he was on the show. Who knows what's going to happen after this show? Chad Young, the Warren County Tennis and Sports Facility Assistant Manager, is my guest. Thank you, Doug. How are you? I thought you were going to say I was a dynamite uh, co-host. You are a dynamite co-host. Okay, I mean, good. I use so many. I mean, I so many. I could have kept going. Fireworks-related <laughs> puns. Yeah. Oh, I know. do you do you uh, participate in Fourth of July uh, festivities like? Fireworks and stuff. I participate in Fourth of July festivities like eating hot dogs and <laughs> cookouts. Um, I have never really been into fireworks, um, so my neighbors are probably pretty happy about that. Yeah, and it's interesting. I haven't either. I, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I, I'm a sparkler kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, not recently, uh, but uh, I'm just not comfortable with those things. But I do participate. Uh, I've always wanted to get into that uh, hot dog eating contest. Oh, competitive eating. Yeah. See, that's something you don't even know about me. Oh, so you do do that. Yeah. Um, not, not anymore, but when I was much younger, um, out at Cheney's, hat tip to Carl there. Way to go, Carl. Uh, they had a moo pie eating contest. Oh. And I won the moo pie eating contest two years in a row. So, it, okay. you know, moo pie is like a, a, right. a big chocolate chip cookie with ice cream on top of it yeah. and whoever got it ate the fastest won and I beat Tony Rose two years in a row so well you were doing really well till you brought up Tony I mean the bar <laughs> the bar's not that high uh, he's just a little little guy but but uh, in shape Tony that's yeah. what I meant by that so well that's awesome but yeah. have you ever seen the hot dog eating contest where they use the water and dip the hot dog and yes now I also gross. did the Oreo cookie eating contest out at uh, I think it's the chocolate festival which that's a different you know you're trying to eat as many as possible as opposed to eating as fast as you can and I didn't do very well in that because really? I mean you're, you have to dip the cookies in like water that's gross that is gross milk milk would have worked yes but uh, so anyway thank you for coming in today I mean it's great to see you again and we were talking off here it's it's been not quite a year yep. since you've been on the show but pretty much a week or so after you were on the show a year ago, uh, you took a new position. Yeah, I was, uh, I was in, in radio for yeah. 22 years at WKCT and uh, had my own morning show and did high school sports. And um, uh, about a year ago, not quite, it was in September that I took a, a new position with Warren County Parks and Recreation. Uh, we opened a new indoor tennis facility uh, out of Buchanan Park, and so we opened in November 1st, and it's been a pretty crazy, wild ride for the last 10 months. It's it's an amazing facility. I, I stuck my head in there. You weren't there. Uh, it was after hours, um, but you put in long hours, but you weren't there when I was there. And I remember when Total Fitness transitioned out of tennis, yeah. right? Sad day. Yeah. It was a sad day, mm -hmm. and it really upset the the base the tennis base in this area so how well has this been oh, perceived it's been huge and I think because of what happened in the past and just being without an indoor tennis facility yeah. for uh, about a decade um, there was a lot of pent-up demand yeah. and so when we opened November 1st I mean we were slammed and we were really slammed all the way through probably April. Um, it was tough to get a court sometimes. Really? And um, then we slowed down a little bit when the weather got better, but then June and um, June has been pretty busy because it's been so hot right. that people have said, hey, we've got an indoor facility, the costs are very reasonable, um, let's just go and play That's inside and not have to worry about you know, falling over dead. At 110 That's uh, right. heat index. Yeah, it, I, I, when we come back from break, I want to talk to you about uh, some of the tournaments that you may be hosting mm -hmm. coming up. 
Uh, I know when you were doing the Soki tennis and I was playing tennis, you always put me at the 12 o'clock <laughs> match in, in July, and uh, that was great. But I want to talk to you about that and some of the other things that the facility offers sure. and how people can, can get involved. So uh, stay tuned. More with Chad Young on this special July 4th Sporting Time show on WNKY. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Chad Young is my guest today, and we are, we're talking some tennis. Uh, Warren County Parks, brand new facility. At, well, uh, I say brand new, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're still under a year old, um, so there's still some newness. I, I, there are a lot of people who probably haven't been out there yet. Uh, we'd love to have them. We have six indoor courts. Uh, we have six outdoor courts. Uh, we have four racquetball courts. One of the biggest things about the facility is we have a, an indoor playground and meeting room space, and the indoor playground has been very very popular really? yeah especially with the heat yeah so and and you know you are also you didn't mention this you are also the head coach of the south warren that's right uh mm -hmm. tennis team been there since the school opened yeah so that's what 11 years now yeah i think this was my 12th year actually okay. yeah so i mean you've been involved with tennis for a long long time uh we were kind of talking off air uh you know i played tennis in high school then i transitioned to racquetball and played a lot you did just the opposite yeah, I played tennis in high school, came here to Western and didn't really want to play tennis anymore and started playing racquetball um, up, up at the Preston Center and then started playing tennis again uh, right after I graduated and I've, I've been playing tennis pretty regularly for 16, 17 years. So have you, have you embraced the pickleball thing? I mean, it's, it's huge. It's on yeah, ESPN. It really is. Um, I, I haven't played pickleball other than just hit around a little bit. Um, and I don't know why. Um, it looks a lot of fun. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit, it's very similar to tennis. That's why a lot of former tennis players or older tennis players have kind of transitioned to pickleball. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't jumped on it yet. I, I've, I've played a little bit of racquetball out of the facility. Yeah. Um, now you have to be really careful playing racquetball and tennis at the same time because yeah. the swings are so yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, but pickleball is pretty similar. Yeah, and um, are there two court, two pickleball courts, or, or are the tennis courts transitioned down to a pickleball? Because of uh, USDA regulations for tournaments, we don't have pickleball uh, lines on the court, um, and we offer pickleball. The, the county parks has uh, a great outdoor pickleball facility out at Basil Griffin, um, and all of our um, our gyms, Ephraim White and yep. Buchanan which is next door to our facility, they have pickleball leagues and they've got all the equipment there. So we've kind of funneled pickleball over uh, to the gyms uh, yeah. for now uh, because the USTA really doesn't want us to, to put any more lines on the, on the tennis surface. Well, yeah, there's, there's you know, enough lines to understand where it needs to be hit. But as far as tournaments go or, mm -hmm. or how people can get involved, what's, what's the schedule look like? Well, um, we just had a, a, a tournament last month. We had about 170 players wow. uh, for that, and, and that's on a, on a series of tournaments called the Central Kentucky Tennis Series. There's another one coming up uh, in August uh, that uh, Greenwood's coach, Tim Dethridge, hosts. Um, and then we've got a couple big tournaments coming up uh, this fall. Uh, they're part of our USTA league play. Uh, we have a, a, you mentioned Soki Tennis. That's yeah. our, our local CTA. And uh, we have uh, mixed doubles and what's called combo doubles, which is where a player um, with a little bit higher rating plays with a player with a little bit lower rating. And we're hosting the state championships for both of those. Uh, the mixed is coming up in August, um, and the combo wow. is coming up uh, in October. So those will be big events from, uh, with people coming from all over the state to play here in Bowling Green. That's fantastic. I mean, that's really fantastic. We got about 90 seconds left. I told you this flies by way too fast. How much are you enjoying it now that you've got a few months under your belt, transitioning from what you did to what you're doing now? You know, it's been a it's been a transition. I mean, you do something. I mean, I, I started in radio when I was in college, and <laughs> so um, I did tennis, uh, running tournaments, 
coaching at South Warren, giving lessons, all that stuff. I did that kind of on a part-time basis. Yeah. And so this has kind of been uh, transitioning to a full-time career, really, uh, working in, in tennis and, and, and working in parks. So it's, it's been fun. It's been, a, it's been a, an interesting ride. It's, it's been a transition, but I really enjoy what I do. Well, you're, you're a natural fit. And, and really, again, I want to thank you for coming in. Let's do this. When I get this knee replaced in July, when yeah. I get it, when I'm back, let's you and I do, uh, we'll do a three-game series. We'll play a tennis match. We'll do a racquetball match, and we'll do a pickleball match. I love and it. And we'll have a little trophy, and the champion will be crowned between Chad Young and Doug Thompson. I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it's you been, having it's me. It's been fantastic. All right. When we come back, Superman will be here on the Sporty Time Show. Yes, it will be Brian Davis, so do not turn your TVs off. More of the Sporting Time Show right here on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back. My next guest is just dynamite. He needs no introduction. He is he is a 4th of July every single day. I want to welcome into the show Brian Davis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the result you get. Don't play with fireworks, kids. Ooh, yes. Safety. Safety. Yes, Safety that first. is very good. And I'm you look at I'm glad you're on the on the recovery. Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the eye patch is is something you probably don't want to wear, but you have to wear. But it looks it looks kind of cool, to be honest with you. Uh, since Thor comes out Thursday, I'm in, chilling my inner Nick Fury. So there we go. Do you like the, you like that series, the Thor series? It's, well, the first two were not that great, but this last one, Ragnarok, was good, and this Love and Thunder should be good, too. There we should go. Be. There we go. It is good to see you. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Yes, because I've been busy with all kind of uh, stuff. Because we had new coaches being hired everywhere. We've had... Uh, just all kind of things going on in the district, in my area, and so forth like that. By the way, the Sporting Times NKY Sports Entertainer of the Month, Phil Todd, new coach at Russellville. His press conference was entertaining. That's entertaining. It's isn't it interesting how it's like full circle at Russellville? Yeah, it is full circle. I so. mean, he was there. He wasn't there. He's there. He wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And is this the third? Uh, third stint for my yeah. league, Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, but but big news too, uh, with Coach uh, Carlos. Yes, going to South Warren. Yes. Yeah, I mean that's huge. That's huge. And I'm yes. so happy for him because he wanted that head coaching job for so many years. Yes. And he finally got his chance, and now he's in the 14th district, uh, back in the uh, the battlegrounds. Well, he was there, remember, uh, already at Warren Central as assistant coach. But as assistant. Right. But he but he knows. That's the, what I mean. The, now he he's knows. the yeah. head coach. Yeah, he's head coach. And now he gets, you know, it's his team. And, you know, it's going to be some great uh, rivalries to see him battle uh, some of the other programs. In the, mm-hmm. in the, and look, at, l- let's face it, um, we're, we're not, we weren't going to talk about basketball, but uh, Warren Central is, uh, they're on top of the hill for the upcoming basketball season. They should be a top three team to start the, in the state. Should be start the season. No question about it. They should it. be. Bowling Green's going to be strong. Right, going to be strong. But Warren Central is returning everybody except one guy, and uh, they can fill fill gaps very easily. So, uh, 14th district is not going to be any different than any other year. It is going to be very difficult. Well, it's, it is going to be different. Warren East ain't there no more. Okay, very true. Warren East is now in the 15th district. Right. Um, but as far as challenging for that crown, it's it's a it's Warren Central here, Bowling Green, and then Greenwood South Warren, mm-hmm. uh, and who knows? You know, Greenwood lost a couple of big players. Uh, they got some guys returning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what Coach does with South Warren, what, yep. what he's able to do there. Uh, but before that, Brian, we we've got football. Oh yes, we have got football coming up. In just 
uh, August. It starts late August. Rafferty's about, about Bowl. About seven weeks. Yeah. About seven weeks. Yeah. Uh, Rafferty's Bowl. Greenwood has a bowl. Everybody's got a bowl game pretty much at the start of the season pretty much. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. And I, before we get to the, bas- the, the football part of it, I, I got to ask you quickly, the referee situation, uh, I talked to one of the assigning secretaries, 60% of the referees and officials in the state of Kentucky are 60 years of age or older. We need to figure out how to get more referees into the system. That's a good question. How do you do it? More money? Do you do that? I mean, I, what do you do? I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Well, I, it's think, hard. I think that's a part of it, but I think the other part of it is what referees have to go through that's these days. sad. Yes. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, I do. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, I had an opportunity to talk to the district athletic director in Tennessee yesterday, and they're looking at pushing games to Thursday night because they don't have the officials either. Oh, and yeah. what happens is that junior programs are going to suffer, JV programs are going to suffer in Tennessee because they're going to get knocked out of the rotation there. So. It's a, it's a huge, huge problem. Probably the biggest issue in all of sports, high school sports. And i got to take a break. When we come back, I do want to talk mm-hmm. more about that. So stay tuned. More with Brian Davis right here on the Sporting Time Show, WNKY, NBC40. Welcome back. Brian Davis is my guest, and thank you, Chad Young, for joining me today also. So we were talking about officials, and you mm-hmm. told me last year Franklin played Ohio, at Ohio County on a Thursday night because of referee shortage. And Greenwood also had to play on a Thursday night. Uh, so Brent it, was it's, telling it's, me. It's happening here, too, as well. It's happening here, too. Yeah, so it, it is probably the biggest story uh, in all of sports that do, it, that is not related to the actual participants playing the game, but officials, because they got to get some new blood in the system. And it's tough to do that. It is tough to do that. Yeah. So, you know, I, you, we just got to quit pounding on referees. I agree. Got to quit pounding on them. They're just, you know, they have full-time jobs. They're out there doing something. Yeah, they don't get it right 100%. But guess what? I'm not 100% right all the time. Look, for the fans, I don't come to your job and pick on you what, on what you do. So Ooh. don't pick on referees. Quit. Great point. Quit that. Great point. I'm 99.9% right, but not, not 100%. Mm-hmm. All right. So the officials thing is going to be a big story coming up this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one of the stories that is on most people's minds is Warren Central football. Oh, and gosh. No, listen, I am their biggest cheerleader. I want them to succeed so bad, so much. They got the right guy. Coach Nelson is the one that can do do. it. I looked at their schedule. You looked at their schedule. Look, first of all, Coach Nelson does not look. He does not look in the rearview mirror. He's not looking back. Doesn't want his players to look back. But the reality is, they have not won a game since October 2015. Their, Their schedule is not easy this year. It's going to be a challenge, but, man, we are pulling for Warren Central to win. Yeah. And you're an yeah. alum. Yeah. Yes. Um, you lose 61 games in a row. It is very hard, very, very hard to convince a kid that has either some of an ego or some of the pride in them to come out there and play for a team that's lost for seven years straight. That is really tough to do, and that's why their numbers are not very good because of that. Well, look, at you got to approach it is that you could be the student athlete that changes everything for Warren Central football. You've got you, you to could. Be, you have to address it as if you guys are the ones of the future. You're the future. The other part of it, they got to get they have to get fan support. I was at homecoming last year and we almost had as many sporting times guys there as there were people in the stands. You've got to support the kids regardless of their win-loss record. It doesn't matter. 
they got to be supported. They got to hear those fans. Again, they lost 61 straight. I, you, you're going you're gonna to tell, tell somebody to go out there and yes, spend $7 yes. to do that. They're not going to do yes, that. They yes. got to start winning some games. And unfortunately, uh, you keep making difficult schedules and not, you know, give them games, opportunities to win outside your district. I mean, it's tough to tell someone that, you know, hey, let's go spend $7 and watch Warren Central, who hasn't won a game in seven years to watch him go play some football and, and watch him lose. Well, so, I listen. mean, you know, it, it's, it's tough. It, it, it pains me, and I, I know the reasons why behind it. I wish I had a whole show to talk about this because I could talk about this for days, why the, 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 the demise of Warren Central oh, uh, well, football. That's a but, week-long series. We uh, could, that's, a, that's a month-long no, series. Yeah, that's for, a month-long yeah, series. Yeah. But Sporting Times are going to live stream some of their games this year. We are going to be there. Mm -hmm. We're going we're to watch them. We're going to live stream them. Um, I can't wait to hear from Coach Nelson at Football mm -hmm. Media Day, which will be the second Saturday in August. And it's going to be big. It's going to be different. It's going to be big. Uh, but I, the venue may be the same. It may not. We're still working on that. Okay. But I know you love Media Day. I know you love football. Yep, because uh, the guys talk trash. It's awesome. It's great. Well, it's a great day. <laughs> all right. So if you were to rank the coach that – is the most mic drop worthy? Who would that that's, coach that's be? Pretty, that's very easy. That's very easy. <laughs> wait, wait, don't say it. Wait, don't say it. I'm going to write it that down here real very, quick. very, very easy. All right, who this did you man, pick? This man talks trash. This man Who is, did you pick? This man's got the subtle shade that'll just jab you with a knife and you don't even realize it. <laughs> My man, Brad Hood from ACS. Right there. That's, that's, I, that's the I guy. I picked it. That's right the there. guy. Yeah. That's the guy right there. I talked to him uh, Last week, mm -hmm. we got 45 seconds left. I, I talked to him on the phone. I said, what is it going to take for you to invite me to go swimming in your pool? Uh -huh. and, you know, what temperature do we need to get at? He says, the road to Scottsville is always open. He said, but my biggest concern is taking the hair out of the strainer. <laughs> right? It's a ball joke, and you're exactly right about Coach Hood. But he is one of our favorites. So 20 seconds left, just real quick. What's on? Just 15. Well, hope I thought I was coming here today to talk about celebrity boxing because I think we're going to get you involved in celebrity boxing coming up next year in Franklin, which we'll talk I can't about that wait. later on. I can't wait. We're out of time. Have a great 4th of July. See you next week.